the computer. So I'll send the email out afterwards, cool? And yeah, you have to press the consent button so you can't just be <laughs> recorded. Um, so a lot of times people will try to fight the tension in their body by finding it somewhere else, right? Like, let me just push harder and that'll break through the tension. We're gonna try the action, we're, we're gonna do the reverse of that. So everything we're gonna do today, unless I say I want you to squeeze something, is gonna, your body should be pretty relaxed. If I ask you to tuck your hips, I'm, I don't want you to like force it into this position. I might ask you to do it, but really gently so your abs are soft. Does that make sense? We're gonna do something like this. It's gonna feel really minute, but we're, we're gonna go to the other end of the spectrum where I want your body to chill. Make sense? So we're, we're not gonna go that route of just push harder into this position. We're gonna teach our body how to actually relax so that we can get into these ranges, all right? So first thing we're gonna do, let's lay on our back. You don't need to watch me for this. I just want you to listen. Lay on your back with your knees bent, your feet on the floor, okay? Knees bent feet on the floor, all right? Let's place both hands on our stomachs, okay? Both hands on your belly. Now, throughout this whole motion, I want you to keep, I want you to feel how soft and relaxed your abs are right now, all right? So first things first, I want you to give me some space between your low back and the floor. So you're gonna arch your back, keeping your butt on the ground, yeah? Keeping the butt on the ground, just tilt the hip so that there's a little bit of space between the low back and the floor. Like I could slide my hand under your low back if I wanted to, yeah? Good, now in this position, breathe in really slow and use that breath to stretch your stomach out. So I'm breathing into my belly intentionally, right? Use that breath to fill up your stomach and that'll raise your hands up. And then when you exhale, don't forcefully exhale. You'll just let the air out of your mouth. So your hands are still on your belly. Hands are still on your stomach. You're gonna keep that arch in your low back, not as hard as you can, just a little bit. And use your breath to inflate your belly up, okay? So I'm just using my breath to fill my stomach with air, and that's raising my hands up and down, right? Let's do a few breaths like this. So all I'm just doing is, and if I was in the room with you, I wouldn't wanna, I, I want you to breathe slowly and softly, think smooth, not like a vacuum cleaner where you're sucking that air in, okay? No fancy Dyson vacuum cleaners, all right? Should be quiet. I should, if we, I was in the room with you, I wouldn't want to hear it, all right? So just fill your belly up with air. Get those abs to actually relax and stretch out. Good. Now, Staying in this position, just listen. We don't need, I'm not doing anything fancy. Do the reverse motion of this. So instead of having the back arched, keep your abs soft and flatten your back. I want you to try to do that. Good. And let's just go back and forth a few times. Arch the back, flatten the back. Try to keep the abs soft the whole time as you do this. Go nice and slow, just a few reps forward and back. Arch the back, soften the back, flatten the back, keeping the abs soft, yeah? Try and find that real quick. Taking your time, we're not speeding through. Nice work. A few more reps here, a few more reps of just arching the back, flattening the back. Good. Now, 
Relaxing the back for a second and the hips for a second. Let's take the attention away from there. Take the attention away from that part of your body and drive it to your feet. Keeping the, staying in the exact same position, okay? Just paying attention to where your feet are. Let's bring your feet to be about as wide as your hips. Okay, so not any wider, not super wide, not super narrow, okay? Now, let's find some weight in your heels. Keeping your, as we do this whole exercise, I want you to keep both feet glued to the floor. That means even the toes, yeah? I don't want the toes doing any sort of weird things, lifting or wiggling, if you can wiggle them individually, all right? Finding some weight on your heels and now finding some weight on the inner parts of your feet, okay? Without, without moving your hips too much, right? Without moving your knees too much. Just find weight on the heels and the inner parts of your feet. Good. Now, keeping that same position, nothing else is changing. Push your heels gently into the ground. You'll feel your hamstrings turn on, right? Without lifting the toes up, the feet stay in the exact same position, okay? Toes should still be on the ground. Yes, Frank, I was talking to you, exactly that. Okay, toes are still on the ground. Heels are driving gently, not as hard as I can, gently into the ground. And now think about pulling them back towards your butt. Heels down and back without your feet moving, without anything changing. You should feel those hamstrings light up. Okay, heels down and back. And now without lifting the hips up in the air like a glute bridge, Tilt your hips up under you, flatten your back, okay? So using that tension in your legs to tilt your pelvis, that flattens your back. Your abs should still be soft, okay? Abs should be soft. You're using the legs now to pull the hips under you to flatten your back. So it's coming from the feet up versus using the abs to crunch. Got it? Let's all relax for a second. Let's all relax for a second. Shake that out. Okay. You might feel a lot of tension in the hamstrings there. That's good. That's what I want. Yeah? That's what I'm looking for. You might feel it in the glutes. That's okay. As you do this, it's okay for... Uh, you can come to your screen real quick. It's okay for where the pocket is on my pants to lift up off the bed, off the floor. What I don't want you to do is this, okay? I tell you to drive down and back and the whole thing shoots up. That's not what I'm looking for, okay? I'm just looking for a gentle press of my feet into the floor, my heels going down and then back towards my butt. Okay, so if you can see the, the rug, you see how it's sliding like this? This is essentially the motion I want you uh, to be trying to do. So I'm pressing down and back. And then I'm using that tension in my legs to flatten my back. So I'm going to move my hands just so you can see. Flatten my back really gently. So I'm not going up like this. It's just a roll of the hips. Cool? It's just this scoop, scooping motion. All right, let's try that one more time. One more time, and then we're going to add the next layer on top of that. All right? The next layer, which is the most important layer. Okay, so feet stay glued to the floor, find the heels, find the inner part of your foot. Heels go down and back. Toes are on the ground. Abs are soft. Tuck the hips, use that tension in your legs to tuck the hips gently. Good. Now, all I want you to do, take a nice, smooth breath in through your nose and hold it at the top. Good. Now you're going to open your mouth. Let the air flow out. Don't force it out. Let the air flow out. Good. Keep that. Check back in with your legs every time we breathe out. Okay. Check back in with your legs. Are they doing what you want them to do? Check back in with your hips. Good. 
Take a breath in through your nose again, nice and smooth. Don't force it in. Don't, don't pull the air in. Let it flow in. And now on the exhale, let all your air out. Let it flow out. Keep going until you feel the sides of your abs. The sides of your abs start to contract on the exhale. You'll feel the ribs, the lower ribs start to come in towards your body. And I want you to breathe out until you feel the sides of your abs contract. Okay, when you've done that, breathe back in nice and smooth. Good job. Exhale again at your pace, full exhale. Everything is relaxed except for the legs, except for those abs. The side abs, not the abs in the front, not that six pack abs. Yeah, I want the sides of the abs to be working here. Good. Letting the air just flow in and flow out. Don't force it. Nothing is forceful right now. Good. I want you to find that tension in the abs by the exhale. Don't consciously do it. Just let the air flow out. And now layer number three. Just listen as you keep going. Layer number three. When you find that tension in the abs, keep it. Don't let it go. Okay, so you're going to breathe out, exhale, 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 until you feel that tension in the sides of your abs. Keep that tension as you breathe in. It's going to feel hard to get that air in. Good. Let's do a few breaths together. Yeah, so we're going to all breathe in through our nose. Fill up every last part of the lung layer. Open your mouth, let the air flow out. Don't blow it out, let it flow out. Keep going until you feel those ribs draw in, until you feel the sides of your abs start to contract. Then you keep that tension and slowly breathe back in through your nose. Keep that tension, slowly breathe back in. You're gonna feel your chest rise. That's what I want. Uh, you're going to exhale again at your pace. And just give me two more inhales at your pace. You're going to breathe in. You're going to breathe back out. Keep going until you feel those abs tighten. And then give me one last inhale. Nice work. Nice work, everybody. That's good. Woo. Say hello to your hamstrings and your butt. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to take this same position. We're going to use that same breathing pattern, but real quick. So if I can use my hands, I'm wearing this shirt on purpose, right? Just so you can see what I want you to see. So if I can use my hands to find the lower part of my ribs, right? So here's my stomach. This is where my ribs end, right? And I can actually use my hands here to show you what I'm trying to uh, illustrate. So as I breathe in, you'll see my rib cage expand. You see my hands start to move away from each other. And then as I breathe out, they're gonna come in. And that's not me squeezing my abs like this to draw them in. Cause I can squeeze my abs and my ribs stay out. That actually like pushes my hands up like this. It's like, I'm learning how to pop. Boom, boom. If, I, if I was good, any good at popping, right? Which I'm not. But if I use my breath, you see my rib cage move. So that's what I'm looking for. It's the size of the abs rather than here. Okay, so we want to keep this loose. All right, second position, we're going to do the same breathing pattern in. Number two, I'm going to flip this position 180 degrees and go on to my hands and knees. Okay, so here, just watch first before we get there. Before we get there, I do want your toes on the ground like this versus here. Okay, toes on the ground. 
and then my arms, I'm going to push the floor away from me. So I'm not doing this mobility exercise where um, you see this done a lot, this cat-cow sort of thing. I'm not arching my back. I'm just pushing the floor away. You see the difference? It's my whole back moving versus just crunching in like this, right? So everything is pretty chill. I'm relaxed. My abs are soft. And then I'm just going to reach my arms like I'm pushing them away from me. Yeah? Let's try that. Let's get into that position. We're going to do a few breaths there. This one, you will really feel the abs in. As I push with my arms, I also want you to push your toes into the ground. Okay? Ready? Let's find the position first. Toes pushing into the ground. All right. Now push the floor away from you. Keeping the, the spine relaxed. Not a big crunch. Just a reach with the arms. I love it. Good. Now let's do a few breaths in this position. Let's, let's say let's do three. Okay. Reach the arms away from you. Focusing on a full inhale. Smooth breaths the whole time. Don't force any of that inhale or exhale. Let the air out. Keep going until you feel the, the abs start to tighten. Good. Keeping the abs tight and then slowly breathing back in. For some of you, this is going to be a harder position to breathe in. It's going to feel harder to keep those abs tight in this position. For some of you, you might feel a big stretch through the upper back, through the mid back, between the shoulder blades. For some of you, the other position was harder. It all depends on where your limitations are. Good. With the breath, I don't want you to blow it out like you're blowing out birthday candles. Just let it flow out. Yeah, open the mouth. Kind of like a sigh, like you've been waiting in line at the coffee shop too long. And the person before you doesn't know their order. And you're like, oh, hurry up. You've been here before. You know what a Starbucks is. Okay, deep breaths in, deep breaths out. Let's do three. Just three inhales, okay? When you're done, shake it up. I was going to do two sets in this position. And then we got one more. And then we get to retest everything. See, are we making any progress? Good job. Shake that out. Shake the wrists out. We'll wait for everybody to be done. Cool. Is this harder for anybody to keep those abs tight in this position? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some of you, it's like, no, it's totally easy. And that that's, that's just due to the way our bodies are shaped. Some people are really, like me, really wide in the rib cage this way. Some people are naturally wider in the rib cage this way, front to back. Right? Which makes us good at different things. For me, squatting is, I'm really bad at it. Like I have to, like, uh, I can barely go down. I have to be really wide with my legs, but I could deadlift all day. Which means I can sprint really well versus somebody who's built like a distance runner, who's thin, wiry. They can squat all day, but their deadlift is pretty bad, right? The, I mean, these are just ends of the spectrum, but, and there's a lot of gray area in between. But these are just two, two completely different things. So let's try one more set of this. This is why it feels more challenging for some of you than the others in different positions. Okay, let's go back to the hands and knees. Let's do one more set of three. Okay, and then we'll finish off with one more, finish out with one more position. Toes pressing into the ground here too, yeah? Not as hard as you can, just enough to feel that tension in the feet. Spine, I don't need you to tuck or anything like this. Just keep it relaxed. Just I just need to reach with those arms. Okay, so pushing the floor away from you, reaching through with those arms, and let's give me three breaths, full inhales, don't cut yourself short, relaxing the neck too, I don't need you forcing it down, just relaxing the neck, good, think about this reach as the, your shoulder blades wrapping around 
your rib cage. Yeah, versus you crunching your back. The shoulder blades are just wrapping around. You feel a stretch through that middle of the back. Really focus on a full exhale to find the abs instead of crunching the abs in. Okay, that exhale is going to do it for you. Nice. And when you watch the playback on this, you'll see some of you, you can actually see the tension in your shirts as your rib cage expands and contracts. As you breathe out, you see a lot more slack in the shirt. As you breathe in, you'll see that tension start to grow, which is what I'm looking for. That's good. Just three breaths when you're done. Sit the hips back, shake it out. Cool. Let's wait for everybody. And then we'll go to our last position, which is the easiest position to be in, but it's the hardest position to breathe in because you're the most compressed, okay? Hardest position to be in. Easiest one to stay in, but hard to breathe in. So I'm going to go back to my hands and knees, and then I'm going to just take my toes and do the opposite, yeah? So instead of pushing into the ground, I'm going to go top of the feet, and then sit my butt all the way back onto my heels, and then drop down to my elbows. That's it. That's the position. Why is this hardest to breathe in? Because I'm forcing this to shut. So we can't go into the belly anymore. So real quick, if you feel like you are gasping for air, shorten your breath. Yeah, so if you feel like you're like freaking, your body's freaking out because it's not getting a lot of air in, make the inhales and exhales shorter until you feel more comfortable doing it. Okay, let's go into that position. Hands and knees. And now try not to go wide with the legs. Okay, so my, my legs are about still hip width apart. I'm not doing this like frog stretch sort of thing. Okay, about hip width apart and just sit them back. Cool. Sit them back. Let's do three breaths here. Okay, down to the elbows. Relax. You don't need to push into the ground here. Okay, you're just hanging out. And I want you to just focus on the breath. Full inhale, full exhale. In through the nose, you can relax the head. It can be on the ground, that's okay. And I want you, this, this round, pay attention to the inhale. Where do you feel the stretch? Some of you might feel it in the low back. You might feel it in the glutes, actually, for some of you. Others of you, really high up between the shoulder blades. Again, it's all dependent on where your limitation is, where your body's the most tight. And as you breathe in, try not to rock forward. Okay. Your body might want to do that because you're it's trying to make space for all that air that's coming into your lungs. And again, when you watch the playback on this and you look at yourself or somebody else, you might see as they breathe out, you'll see the slack in the shirt change. As they breathe in, you'll actually see it. That's just representative. That's that's telling me your body's actually expanding. It's compressing. That's what I'm looking for here. We're, just, we're trying to get mobility in the rib cage and hips by going inside out. Three breaths, when you're done, shake it up. We're gonna do one more set of just this. Jordan, you okay? <laughs> Your knee's okay, the knee? You might need a mat. <laughs> okay, one last round, one last round, same position, okay? Same position. So as you're doing that, you can actually see it in my shirt. So I'm gonna, you can see those folds in my shirt. So as I breathe in and I exhale, you see all those folds actually get, that slack actually comes in as I breathe out. Then when I fill up my lungs, it actually stretches out. So internally, that's what's happening is your rib cage is expanding forward, back, side to side. For that to happen, 
the hips also have to shift. And I'm talking like millimeters, small, not, not that much range, but all the muscles that are connected to the hips, the spine, the rib cage, then they then get to lengthen and stretch as they should without just going into the hardest position, which is most pe what most people will do when they go into mobility work, right? You'll already go to end range and just attack the limb itself. So let's do one more set. Let's do one more set. And then we'll retest. Yeah, here we go. I'm talking like uh, my kettlebell coach voice with breathing exercises. It's kind of a weird thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd be a horrible yoga instructor. All right, let's bring it down and give me three breaths here. And let's just finish off here. And then we'll all test out together. This position too shouldn't be too forceful. So if it feels a lot, you can rock yourself forward a little bit more. Yeah. Full inhale, work on making it smooth. Work on keeping those abs a little bit tighter. See if you can stretch out the exhale, stretch out the inhale. Now that you're getting a little more used to it. Nice work, everybody. Just three breaths. And then when you're done, shake it out. And we'll revisit those three, sorry, those five different tests. Okay, let's go in reverse order since you're already on the ground. Let's go in reverse order. Let's try this. And just, let's just see. Did we make any change? Does it feel a little bit looser? Let's go side to side. Rock those hips. Good. I'm seeing some change here. Some of you might need a little bit more different positions, but that's okay. This is like super quick general stuff, but we're trying to see where we can make some change a little bit. Good. Let's go into here our toe sit, okay? Let's go left leg, left leg back, right leg forward. Can we be in this position a little bit more comfortably? Can I sit into that hip? Can I be a little more upright? Good, let's try that again. Nice, switch legs. I'm seeing a lot less Crunching of the face, which I like that. I like that. Good job. Jordan, how's that in the ankle? Yeah? Cool. In the toe? Yeah. Cool. All right, let's try your toe touch. Stand up. I'm interested to see what happens here. Just the toe touch. Oh, we're not going to the squat yet. Just the toe touch. Fold forward. Man, look at that. Those knees are almost straight. Without bouncing. Jordan, you too. That's a little bit better. Good. Now do your toe touch and squat. Squat it down. Hey now, hey now, it's a little bit lower. I like that, I like that a lot. Good, now let's try your regular squat. We're just looking for a little bit, a little bit of change. Yeah, let's try your regular squat. Yeah, let's try to keep the heels down and see if this changes anything. And just something to note for yourself. And you can do these tests just to see where you're at. Do some of these exercises. Do like three, four sets, five breaths, and see if it changes anything for yourself. 
Notice if, see if you still notice your shift, right or left. May that looks a lot better. Look at you getting down, no falling back. I like that. Jordan, you too. Yeah, I like to see that. Okay, so let's talk real quick. Why, why did any of this stuff actually work? Why did it actually work? We said it briefly, 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 but why we went to here and the lungs and all this breathing stuff first, we, we got to think internally, inter internally, lungs have to take up all this space in our body, right? For our lungs to expand, for air to get in, our rib cage should open up like an umbrella, right? In, in three dimensions, forward, back, side to side. Over time, because that's not, um, that takes a lot of work for our body, we find more efficient ways to do it. Right, based on our movement history, based on what we do day in and day out. Some people breathe like this. They just use their shoulders to lift up the, the rib cage, or they breathe like this, which doesn't really expand me front to back. It actually compresses my back quite a bit. And then over time, all those muscles in the back get really tight. Or here, when people do this, it's just a compression of the front. And we just get really tight all the time. Right? But what we want is this front to back. And you can actually, we want this to expand. We want this to expand this way. Because all the muscles that attach to there can now actually relax and lengthen. Right? We didn't do any sort of upper body test, but that would actually, if I tested your overhead range, that would get better too, right? Why that affects the hips, again, if we go zoom in, we did an x-ray, MRI, if we could just see x-ray vision, you have your lungs here, you have your diaphragm, which separates the lungs from the rest of the organs, the guts and all of the stomach and all that stuff here. For this to expand, this stuff has to make room too, so it has to shift down a little bit which also expands, the hip is almost like a reverse of the rib cage, right? The rib cage is like this shape, hip is almost the opposite. So all of this has to expand, this stuff has to shift down and that allows the hip to expand almost the same way, right? Again, if I'm, if I'm always doing this, breathing here, breathing like this, what has to, what like ends up being locked up for me down here? which is why sometimes in this toe touch, I'm not, it's not a really a hamstring stretch for me. It says, where is the rounding in your back happening? Some people really go all the way down to the floor. Their back is straight. There's no, and nothing, no range at all. But they're just like, well, my hamstrings are always tight. Well, it's like, yeah, because you're always, essentially you're always like this because your pattern is always here. You never get to experience that lengthening of anything but just the hamstring. Or some people, they can't even get there because it's so, they're just here. And they say, oh, it's my hamstring. But you look at, if you look at my back, it's just flat in the low part. Same with the toe touch, the squat. It's not, you see how flat my low back is in this position? So I've been sitting on my butt all day and I haven't gotten a lot of good movement in lately. And even my upper back, if I was to do this, you see, you can actually tell where my back likes to bend from. It's super flat from the middle of my back up. Right? We want that nice rounding throughout. And this is what helps actually promote mobility everywhere. We didn't do any sort of traditional stretching, but a lot of you got better in some of these tests. Right? Not every single one, because there's some individual variances and different positions we can work on and other strength things we can work on. But this is where I would start with your mobility stuff. And it should actually feed into the feet and ankles, which we'll do next week.
feet and ankles, what we'll, we'll do next week. Yeah? Which is the second part of that squat, toe touch mobility. But this is where we start with this stuff. Cool? I know it's super quick. It's like an hour of all this new stuff. But that's why we have the playback. So try it again. Record yourself just to see. Okay. And then as you're looking at it, where's my back flat? Where, do, where does my body like to round from, if at all? That's what I want you to look at with these things. When you're looking at your toe touch, when you're looking at your squat, record yourself from your, the back with your squat. Do I shift to one side or the other? Right? And then do these things, test it out and see, okay, is it getting better? That's how you know, all right, I'm actually making progress in this regard or not. And then when we do the foot ankle stuff, you can try it again, these same exercises and see if that makes it any better, right? For some people going after the furthest part, the foot helps change the rest. And then for others, it's the other way around. That's why we like to do both based on your history. Like if you've had an ankle injury or something like this, I'm looking at you, Jordan, you're on this side of my screen. So I'm looking at you and Franca, you too. You're both here, ankle injuries right there. <laughs> yeah so different histories will lead to different ways we we attack this stuff but now you have three different positions to help loosen this up like i would do this before i squat because it helps me sink lower like in the gym helps me get lower in this position it gives me more range in the hips so then i can go load it up and i don't have to spend so long just attacking one part of my body cool Thank you all for joining me. Y'all could be doing anything, having brunch, anything like this on a Sunday. You spent an hour on Zoom with me. <laughs> and Frank, I will see you in like 10 minutes. Yeah, so I'll be sending an email out just with, with the recording link so you all can just get the playback and try it for yourself. And then if you have questions, don't be a stranger, hit me up anytime. Cool? Thanks everybody. Have a great Sunday. Thank you for joining. I'm gonna do, I always do this and I always mess it up. I'm gonna take a screenshot and I always end up looking really goofy in them. All right, here we go. Three, two. Thanks everybody. Have a great Sunday. If you have questions, reach out. Bye.